the great James Corden? First of all, uh, congratulations on the Late Late Show and the success over there. Thanks and very the much. tremendous success of Carpool, of Carpool Karaoke. Yeah. How did you come up with that idea? How did that start? Um, it was, uh, I, I, done, I wrote a sitcom at home for the BBC called Gavin and Stacey, and my, yeah, it did very well, and my character from that was, was quite popular. So there's a huge thing at home called Comic Relief and a, a massive um, charity fund that raises millions and millions of pounds for people mm -hmm. who desperately need it and part of the thing is the trade-off is we'll give you some comedy and then you watch the show and do give some donate some money and so my character had done a few sketches that were quite popular and we were coming up with a new one and I had this idea I was like well, what if my character um, well my original idea was to pick George Michael up from prison and um, <laughs> in a car and then That's drive nice. him and then and then we realized maybe we'll lose the prison aspect but what if there's still some fun for me and George to be in the car and we'll sing some Wham songs. And it was just part of the sketch. Wake me up before you go, go. That uh, kind of we thing. did a lot of Baby, I'm Your Man and all that stuff. And it just, it, there was something just very joyful about it. So we decided, let's, um, let's, I wonder if there's an idea within Los Angeles, traffic, carpool lanes, karaoke, that's fun. Driving people in a car, singing songs. Great, people are going to love this. No one wanted to do it. No one at all. <laughs> Really? Like, couldn't I mean, get anybody oh, to bite? Oh, God. I imagine a recording artist. They said no. Like, okay. there wasn't anyone that would do it. And then it was a chance meeting with Mariah Carey, and she said, OK, I'll do it. And, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... Chance meeting. Well, no. I, like... I was in the steam room with Lin-Manuel Miranda and Mariah Carey. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it was a chance meeting with someone from her record company, and they said, we could do it. And it just, yeah, I mean, we didn't think that it would, it would turn out the way it has done, and it's, uh, it's great. We have one going out tonight on the show, actually, for the Tony Awards, which is uh, me, um, are you ready? Me, <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda, <laughs> Audra McDonald, <laughs> Jesse Tyler Ferguson, <laughs> and Jane Krakowski. Oh. And we've done, a, like, a Best of Broadway... That's nice. ...special. That's it's nice. fun. Um, so, OK. The show's a big success. You're in Los Angeles, yes. but you're, you, you started your career in London. Do you, are you beginning to feel like an American now? Or, because, or do you, um, is Los Angeles feeling like home, or do you miss London a lot? Well, I miss London. I, miss, I very much miss being at home. I miss, you know, uh, architecture, and I miss my friends and family. And <laughs> you miss architecture? I, truly. It's... Do, they not, do they not have strip malls in London? Not so much. It's a weird thing. It's funny, because you, you, you certainly feel a sense of it here in New York, but in London, particularly for anyone, it's been like, when anyone says to me, oh, I'm going to London, what should I do? I always just go, look up. Like, because you will always be rewarded. If, you, if you're in London at any point, if you look up, you're like, wow, how is this church in amongst these skyscrapers, or this, that, or the other? But in terms of feeling... Like, lots of people have said to me before, oh, what do you feel, how, how is it being a Brit in America or whatever? And, and the, the truth is, and I don't know whether this, this is just me and the, the family I grew up in, but I've never really considered myself to be anything other than, like, a citizen of the world, really. And I don't really think of myself as being British nor American. I sort of feel we're all kind of in it together and there shouldn't really be any, you know, of those... I just, wanted to validate, I just wanted to validate that moment because I was feeling it with well, you. Uh, well, I should tell you, I met a guy, you know this thing, the Virgin that... Galactic are doing this thing where they, uh, they uh, uh, they're going to take it, Richard thing? Branson are going to take people up to space for like eight minutes and you can look at the Earth. And someone was talking to me about it the other day and I said, but eight minutes, you're just going up, it feels like a lot of risk of possibly dying yeah. for eight minutes. Yeah, it does. And yeah. he said to me, it's exactly how people felt when the first... Um, sort of propeller planes came out, and they would what they do is they just in a town in, a, in America or, or across the world they'd go up in the air and they'd go up for eight minutes and they'd come down, and people would come down with a completely new way of looking at their home where they lived, at their state, uh, because they would see that these divisions that had been created were not, they were man made divisions. We decided that this would be mine and that would be yours and this would be here and that would be here. And he said, imagine if you could make people today realise that on a global scale. If you could go up and look down and go, oh, it's just Earth. 
and it's ours to look after. It's not about you being from here or me being from there or building a wall here or doing those things. It's about <laughs> seeing it as an entirety. And I feel that being British being here, you know? Yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Thanks, man. <laughs> the 70th annual Tony Awards air live this Sunday night here on CBS. Live? With the great James Corden, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.